Hello, my name is Dr. Roderick L. Roll, and today I will be talking to you about Mendel and two-factor genetics. Mendel looked at two-factor genetics. In two-factor genetics, he proposed two hypotheses. One was that dependent assortment took place and the other was that independent assortment took place. Mendel was looking at two genes, one on one chromosome pair and the other on another chromosome pair. If dependent assortment of two genes occur, the F2 phenotypic ratio would be three to one. In that case, chromosome one and chromosome two would travel together. And this slide we're looking at, one chromosome is on the long blue and long red chrom chromosome, and the other chromosome has gene two. It is the shorter of the two. Notice how with this possibility, all of the blue stay on one side, and all of the red stay on one side. In this case, even though it's two genes, you will have a three to one ratio. If independent assortment of two genes occur, the F2 ratio would not be a three to one ratio. Chromosome one and chromosome two would move independently of one another. So based on the image below, 50% of the time you would get probability one and 50% of the time you could get probability two, meaning sometimes all of the blue chromosomes stay on the left side. Sometimes they don't. In Mendel's dihybrid cross between two heterozygotes, he observed a three, a nine to three to three to one ratio. In this image, this is a Punnett square, and you can clearly see nine yellow round seeds. You can clearly see three yellow wrinkled seeds. You can clearly see three round green seeds and one green wrinkle seed. That is a nine to three to three to one ratio. So based on the results of that heterozygous cross, Mendel concluded that chromosomes moved independently of one another. The cross that he looked at using the Punnett square, you can also use what is called a branch diagram. This is how to do a branch diagram. The data collected from this dihybrid cross between two heterozygotes led to Mendel's discovery of the law of independent assortment. I would like you to now demonstrate that you know how to do a dihybrid cross of two heterozygote individuals. Pause the slide if you're not ready to see the answer. This is the answer for that cross. We have nine, three, three to one. For example two, I would like you to do this cross. If you are not ready for the answer, please push pause.
the results indicate that you have six big butt, big head individuals, six big butt, little head individuals, two little butt, big head individuals, two little butt, little head individuals. These are the individuals we were talking about. The image to the top right is a big butt, big head. That individual is known as the Belgian blue. The bottom picture is a brangus. He has a little butt, but a big head. I would like you to practice using example three, four, and five. We will now look at a pedigree. A lot of farmers and dog breeders like to know the origin of traits in their livestock. So a pedigree analysis can be performed to do that. A pedigree can also be used in research and to look at family traits. In this image we're looking at, this is Queen Victoria and a X-linked recessive inheritance trait called hemophilia. For human studies, this is how we can utilize a pedigree for the trait called Widow's Peak. If you have Widow's Peak, we're going to shade in your shape, either a square for you being a male or a circle for you being a female. These lines between the shapes indicate a union between gametes. This means that sex occurs and babies are formed. The babies are below the original parents. If it is shaded, the individual has the trait. So I would like for you to answer this question. Write the genotypes right up under these shapes. Taking into consideration that if you have the trait, you are shaded. If you're not ready to proceed, push pause. These are the answers. Here is another example of a pedigree utilizing the same trait. The dominant individuals in this image will be shaded. This slide illustrates another example of a pedigree analysis. The trait in question is attached earlobe and free earlobe. In this example, the shaded shapes are the recessive trait. This is a pedigree of myself. My father had Widow's Peak and my mother had no Widow's Peak. And all of the offspring have Widow's Peak. You should be able to create your own pedigree analysis from some of the human traits that we will use in lab. We can apply the multiplication rule to predict the outcome of crosses involving multiple characteristics instead of doing the branched diagram or the Punnett square. So I've shown you how to use the Punnett square and I showed you how to use the branch diagram. 
to determine what the offspring might be. Now I'm going to show you a mathematical way to achieve the same results. In calculating the chances for various genotypes in a multi-character cross, each character is considered separately. Then the individual probability will be multiplied. To explain this concept, I need you to cross two heterozygous individuals with two genes. What is the probability of getting a double dominant individual? Big Y, big Y, and big R, big R. You can do a Punnett square to figure that out, or you can do a branch diagram to figure that out. This is the mathematical way. You draw a small Punnett and you look for just the probability that you get a big Y, big Y. That probability is one fourth. Then you draw a small Punnett for the cross with the R. And again, you get a one fourth probability of big R, big R. You multiply one fourth by one fourth and you get one sixteenth. This is how you can use the multiplication rule to achieve the same results from the dihybrid branch diagram or the dihybrid Punnett square. You can answer the same question with this branch diagram. One out of 16 chance that you are big Y, big Y, big R, big R. You could also answer the question by drawing out the Punnett square. Let's try another one. What is the probability that from this cross you would get big Y, little y, big R, big R? Make your small Punnett squares. Then you have a two-fourth chance of being big Y, little y, a heterozygote, and a one-fourth chance of being big R, big R. You multiply two-fourth times one-fourth, and you get 216. You could also draw out the branch diagram. Or you can draw out the Punnett square.